Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, then you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up that can be helpful for you, you can be notified about the same. You can also join our Telegram group. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, then you can get the access to those PDFs through this very group only. Now let's move on to question number one, which says RBI has put in place some trigger points to assess, monitor, control and take corrective action on the banks which are weak and troubled. The process or mechanism under which these actions are taken, these actions are taken is called prompt corrective action. Which of the following banks are recently under this very framework? So they are talking about that we have to identify the banks which are recently under this PCA framework. So let's first discuss what is this PCA framework and then we'll come back to this question. So as the name suggests, prompt corrective action. So we have certain trigger points, certain indicators which we consider to assess the performance of the bank in a timely manner. So time to time, it is the responsibility of RBI to keep a track on the performance of the banks, assess their performance, monitor them and take actions to control them timely. So if the banks are moving more towards uh, giving such kinds of loan which are likely to turn into NPAs in a very short span of time, okay, if they are heading more towards NPAs or the banks are not maintaining enough capital which is required as per different requirements like basal norms and all. So beforehand only some actions should be taken on these banks otherwise their performance will deteriorate even further. Okay, So the very framework which assesses this performance and make sure that timely prompt actions are taken against those banks whose situation is deteriorating. This entire framework is called the prompt corrective action framework. So here are different parameters that RBI has decided to maintain such capital adequacy ratio to the banks or how much capital banks have to maintain the banks. Net NPAs should not exceed the bank. So there are these three indicators that the bank uses जो RBI यूज करता है बैंक की परफॉर्मेंस असेस करने के लिए तो उसके रिस्क थ्रेशोल्ड स्पेसिफाइड है अगर उससे ज्यादा या उससे कम जाता है वो रेशियो तो बैंक्स को प्रॉम्प्ट करेक्टिव एक्शन फ्रेमवर्क के अंदर रखा जाता है और RBI फिर उन पे कुछ रिस्ट्रिक्शंस लगाता है जैसे आपको इतनी ज्यादा सैलरीज नहीं देनी है मैनेजमेंट को इतना आपको लोन्स जो हाई रिस्क लेंडिंग है वो आप उस पे आपको कर्ब्स लगाने हैं आपको ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा प्रोविजन्स रखने हैं कैपिटल के क्योंकि आप इनफ कैपिटल नहीं मेंटेन कर रहे हो सो जो ये पूरा फ्रेमवर्क है जिसके थ्रू आरबीआई बैंक्स को मॉनिटर करते हैं और एसेस करता है उनकी परफॉर्मेंस को और जब देखता है वो कि वो डिटरिएट हो रही है तो उन पे रिस्ट्रिक्शंस लगाता है इस पूरे फ्रेमवर्क को हम पीसीए फ्रेमवर्क कहते हैं सो टू इंश्योर दैट बैंक्स डोंट गो बस्ट आरबीआई हैज पुट इन प्लेस दीस ट्रिगर पॉइंट्स व्हिच विल हेल्प द आरबीआई टू असेस मॉनिटर कंट्रोल द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ बैंक एंड टेक करेक्टिव एक्शंस अगेंस्ट देम व्हेन दे आर वीक और व्हेन दे आर इन टू अ ट्रबल्ड सिचुएशन सो दिस इज व्हाट वी कॉल द पीसीए फ्रेमवर्क इट्स बेसिकली एन अर्ली इंटरवेंशन पैकेज और अ रेजोल्यूशन गाइडलाइन बाय आरबीआई when a bank turns weak in terms of identified indicators. So, on indicators ke basis pe jab hume dikh raha hai ki bank ki position weak hai, troubled situation mein hai, to hum pehle hi intervene karke actions le lenge taaki situation aur kharaab na ho. Central bank uses this framework to rename the banks that have reached these regulatory thresholds in bad loans and capital adequacy and all. Okay, and by uh, doing so, it imposes curbs on high risk lending, setting aside more money on provisions and restrictions on management salary and many more things okay so alag alag threshold specify ki gai hai agar aap unko follow nahi kar paate ho to aapke against phir RBI action lega so ye applicable hai banks ko ab mein ye discuss kyo kar rahi ho kyunki recently ek bank hai jise PCA framework se bahar nikal diya kya hai uski situation ab improve ho gai hai aur woh bank hai Yuko Bank why I am discussing about this framework because recently Yuko Bank has been taken out of this framework. So the performance of Yuko Bank was uh, such that it was currently under the PCA framework and RBI imposed the restrictions on this very bank. 
but recently uh, a review was done by the board of financial supervision and they assessed the performance of this very bank as per their results published on 31st march 2021 and what was observed was that the uh, बैंक वॉज नॉट इन ब्रीच ऑफ दी पी सी ए पैरामीटर्स जो भी पैरामीटर्स है कैपिटल इतनी होनी चाहिए डेट एन पी ए रेशियो इतना होना चाहिए लीवरेज रेशियो इतना होना चाहिए वो सब जब असेस किया गया तो ये पता लगा कि बैंक जो ये बैंक है ये वो थ्रेश होल्ड्स के विद इन वर्क कर रहा है ओके उसको ब्रीच नहीं कर रहा द बैंक हैज प्रोवाइडेड अ रिटर्न कमिटमेंट दैट इट वुड कंप्लाई विद द नॉर्म्स ऑफ मिनिमम रेगुलेटरी कैपिटल दी एन पी ए रेशियोज द लीवरेज रेशियो and has apprised rbi of the structural and systemic improvements that it will follow uh, to uh, and make sure that it basically meets its commitments which it has made to rbi so the bank has uh, made a commitment to rbi that it is going to follow the capital ratio in at npa leverage ratio it has made improvements in its functioning in its structure and they are going to help the bank to बेसिकली वर्क एज पर दी रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन सो ये सब चीज़ें वो फॉलो करेगा अपने सिस्टम में इम्प्रूवमेंट्स की है ये कमिटमेंट बैंक ने आर बी आई को की है एंड ये सब चीज़ें ध्यान में रखते हुए अब इसको पी सी ए फ्रेमवर्क से बाहर कर दिया गया है टेकिंग इन टू कंसिडरेशन ऑल दिस आर बी आई हैज डिसाइडेड दैट यूको बैंक इज टेकन आउट ऑफ दी पी सी ए रिस्ट्रिक्शन विच वर इम्पोज सब्जेक्ट टू सम कंडीशन एंड कंटिन्यूस मॉनिटरिंग विल बी देयर और राइट now talking about another important thing which banks are currently under this framework now only two banks are there under this framework the indian overseas bank and the central bank of india so abhi tak teen banks the indian overseas bank central bank of india aur yuko bank ab kyunki yuko bank is framework se bahar ho gaya hai to indian overseas bank and central bank of india do banks hai jo is framework ke under aate hain okay so if i move back to the question we had to identify which banks are under this framework recently as per the latest decision only these two banks are there ye bahar nikal gaya hai ye is framework mein nahi hai second third so answer is option c now moving on to question number 2 which says rbi has come up with enhanced directions in relation to the storage of card data by the entities or other merchant and tokenization of these card transactions you have to identify the correct statements in this regard so let us discuss a bit about tokenization and what decision rbi has taken up recently rbi has come up with new enhanced directions which relate to the storage of card data by different entities by different merchants you might often have used various e -pla e-commerce platforms like you may have you might have bought something on amazon on flipkart or other platforms okay now once you make say suppose you buy a mobile okay and you uh, enter your debit card details and make a payment through that so there is an option where you can save these card details so that later on when you again make the purchase you don't have to enter those details again now second time suppose you have to purchase something else say you are purchasing some footwear and you again want to make a payment through debit card so your those details are saved over there you just need to enter the uh, cvv code and then you need you will get a notify and you can make the payment there is no that issue of entering entire details of your debit card your card holders name and all again and again so this facility was offered by different entities different merchants to their platforms now rbi has taken certain decision let's see what that decision is abhi tak jo ye merchants hain alag alag platforms hai amazon flipkart aap in pe jab pay karte the to aapne suppose debit card ke through payment ki to aapki sari details save ho jati thi next time aapko wo sari details card number card holders name fir se dalne ki zarurat nahi padti thi just cvv dal ke aapko otp aata tha aur aap payment kar dete the ab rbi ne us pe restriction laga di hai jahan ye merchants us data ko store nahi kar payenge so what rbi has done it has directed that no entity or merchant other than the card issuer and the card network should store data the card details uh, with effect from january 2022 this rule will be applicable where no entity in the card transaction or payment chain other than card issuer and network can store data and if there is any data which has been previously stored it needs to be removed so jan 2022 onwards sirf card issuer जो भी बैंक्स हैं जो कार्ड इशू कर रहे हैं और जो भी कार्ड नेटवर्क्स हैं जैसे रुपए हो गया वीजा हो गया ये सब आ, ही सिर्फ आ, जो कार्ड डिटेल्स है वो सेव कर पाएंगे बाकी मर्चेंट्स और एंटिटीज 
जो है वो कस्टमर के कार्ड डिटेल्स को सेव नहीं कर सकते और अगर कर रखी है तो अब उन्हें रिमूव करना पड़ेगा दिस हैज बीन अ डिसीजन टेकन बाय आर बी आई सेकेंड डिसीजन दैट रिलेट्स टू दिस कार्ड डिटेल्स इज दैट आर बी आई हैज एक्सटेंडेड द टोकनाइजेशन ऑफ कार्ड ऑन फाइल बाय कार्ड इशूअर्स सो लेट एस फर्स्ट डिस्कस वॉट इज टोकनाइजेशन वॉट इज कार्ड ऑन फाइल so tokenization is when the card details are converted into tokens what do i mean by token that means some kind of an alternative code some random digit some digital credentials so that the data cannot be misused when you uh, provide the card details it gets converted into some random digits like this so that no one can utilize that data make it uh, make basically misuse that data This is called tokenization. जब आप जो card details है card number है बाकी details है उन्हें किसी code में convert कर देते हो random digits में digital credentials में convert कर देते हो ताकि वो चोरी ना हो पाए और अगर कोई उस किसी को details मिलती भी है अब उसको ये random code मिलेगा इससे उसको कुछ समझ नहीं आएगा तो वो उसको रीयूज यूज नहीं कर पाएगा इस प्रोसेस को हम कहते हैं टोकनाइजेशन ओके एंड कार्ड ऑन फाइल मीन सेविंग ऑफ द कार्ड डिटेल्स जैसे कि अभी मैंने बताया कि जो भी मर्चेंट्स है वो आपके कार्ड डिटेल्स सेव कर लेते थे दैट इज कार्ड ऑन फाइल ओके सेविंग द डिटेल्स इज कार्ड ऑन फाइल लाइक आई डिस्कस इन द एमेजॉन एग्जाम्पल वेर दी मर्चेंट्स यूज टू सेव योर कार्ड डिटेल्स नाउ वॉट आर बी आई हैज डन the tokenize the token service providers that is those who will tokenize the card details or detokenize them it was allowed earlier earlier to only the card networks now rbi has extended it to the card issuers as well so ab card issuers ye tokenization kar sakte hain matlab card ki jo number hai jo details hai usko kisi random codes mein badal sakte hain and they can even store the data so they can card on file usko aap random codes mein badal ke tokens mein convert karke us data ko save kar sakte hain ye facility card networks ke sath sath ab card issuers tak bhi extend kar di gayi hai the tokenization has to be done with the customer consent and uh, through an additional factor authentication that needs to be validated as well okay so earlier only card networks were allowed to act as the token service providers now rbi has permitted card issuers to offer card tokenization service as the token service providers all right now moving ahead rbi has refused to extend the deadline for card tokenization beyond agreed date of 1st jan 2022 scrapping single click purchases but allowing customers not to go through the hassle of typing card transaction डिटेल्स कार डिटेल्स फॉर एवरी ट्रांजेक्शन सो ये डेड लाइन की आप मर्चेंट्स जो हैं अब डेटा स्टोर नहीं कर पाएंगे और जो ये टोकनाइजेशन की है सब रिक्वायरमेंट्स ये सब इस डेट से ज़्यादा एक्सटेंड नहीं की जाएंगी ये आर बी आई ने बोल दिया है करेंटली ऑलमोस्ट ऑल मर्चेंट प्लेटफॉर्म्स कैरी आउट टोकनाइजेशन एंड वेन यू शॉप यूजिंग अ डेबिट कार्ड क्रेडिट कार्ड दे स्टोर योर डेटा इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ टोकन्स Okay. After RBI's latest decision, these sites won't be able to store card credentials of a shopper in any form, and the customers will have to feed in their complete details every time they make a transaction. All right. So what else RBI has done? It has extended a service that would enable the user not to key in a 16-digit number and other details if he chooses to do so. How is it possible? only the bank or the card issuer can enable or disable that service and not the payment aggregators or merchants so the card details that are saved with payment aggregators and merchants will be scrapped and saving of card details and bank card networks can do tokenization banks and card networks can do tokenization as token service providers so bhale hi payment aggregators or merchants have tokenization karke un card details ko save ya fir un card details ko save nahi kar sakte hain lekin jo banks hai jo card issue kar rahe hain jo card networks hai wo customer ki details ko token mein convert karke unhe save kar sakte hain so this will come as a blow to payment aggregators who are lobbying to keep the card details saved with them one click purchase will be made difficult however for the transaction for transaction tracking for reconciliation what rbi has allowed the last four digits along with the card issuer's name can be स्टोर्ड ओके कुछ ट्रांजेक्शन ट्रैकिंग के लिए रिकन्सिलेशन पर्पज के लिए आप लास्ट फोर डिजिट्स जो है कार्ड नंबर के और कस्टमर का नाम जो है कार्ड इशुअर का नाम सेव कर सकते हो बाकी कार्ड डिटेल्स सारी सेव करके नहीं रख सकते 
Now, why this decision has been taken? Obviously, for, from the safety point of view, to push tokenization comes on the context of securing card details of consumers. Card details ka misuse na ho, ye main objective hai is very decision ka. Previously, entities involved in the process of card payment transactions would store card details on their server and according to RBI, availability of such details with a large number of merchants increases the risk of card data being stolen. So, the card information is misused, ho sakti hai, isko prevent karne ke liye decision diya gaya hai. The above enhancements are expected to reinforce safety and security of card data, ensure the convenience in card transaction and this a uh, card on file tokenization will improve the customer data security and it will offer the customer the convenience as well which is being offered right now so this was all about this very topic moving back to our question now we had to identify the correct statements so first is correct which defines tokenization the third is also correct which says that card issuers are permitted for tokenization second is incorrect because it says no entity or merchant can uh, basically save the data other than card issuer and card network from January 2023 onwards. No, RBI has said that after January 2022, ke baad isko extend nahi kiya jayega. So this is incorrect. First and third are correct. So answer is option B. Moving on to last topic and last question of the day now. The settlement cycle represents the time period within which stock exchanges have to settle the security transactions. The securities market watchdog has extended the option to stock exchanges where they can choose between T plus 1 and T plus 2 settlement cycles, thereby providing flexibility to the stock exchanges. Identify the incorrect statement in this regard. Aapko yaha pe incorrect statement identify karni hai. So let's discuss a bit about this very thing, this very news piece and then we'll come back to the question. So, the securities market regulator is SEBI, the Securities and Exchange Board of India. What it has done, it has allowed uh, the stock exchanges to choose that they want a T plus 1 settlement cycle or a T plus 2 settlement cycle. Currently, T plus 2 settlement cycle is being followed for various securities on the stock exchanges. What do I mean by a settlement cycle? Suppose you are purchasing the shares. Suppose you are purchasing some securities on a stock exchange or you are selling them. So if the transaction is happening today, then within a span of two days from that day, the transaction should be settled. That means if you have purchased the shares, then the payment should be done and the shares should be delivered to you within two days. And if you are basically selling your shares, then those shares should be sold and the money should be received within this very time span. Okay, so this is the settlement cycle. Now, uh, SEBI has said that the stock exchanges can follow T plus 1 cycle as well, where if, uh, a transaction is happening today, then within a span of one day, that entire settlement should be done. This will come into effect from 1st January 2022 onwards. So, is date onwards, stock exchanges ke pass option hoga ki wo T plus 1 ya T plus 2, koi bhi settlement cycle follow kar sakte hai. The settlement cycle represents the time period within which the stock exchanges have to settle the transaction. T plus 1 means settlements have to be cleared within one day after actual transaction takes place. A stock exchange can choose to offer a T plus 1 settlement, but for that they need to give an advance notice of at least one month to all stakeholders, public at large and exchanges website. So, if uh, is date onwards, uh, jo bhi, uh, stock exchanges have T plus 1 settlement cycle follow karni hai, to at least in advance mein unko sare stakeholders ko, jo bhi public at large hai, unko notify karna padega ki we are preferring to shift to T plus 1 cycle, unhe apni website pe bhi information batani hogi. Then, if they are opting for a T plus 1 settlement cycle, they need to mandatory follow it for a minimum of 6 months. Okay. And if they intend to switch back to T plus 2, then again 1 month notice is needed. So, stock exchanges ko, agar wo T plus 1 settlement cycle follow karna shuru karte hai, thik hai, to unhe 6 mahine tak at least follow karni hai. Uske baad agar wo wapas T plus 2 mein shift karna chate hai, then they have that option also, but again 1 month notice is to be given. Okay. The market watchdog has directed the stock exchanges, the clearing corporations, the depository that they need to take proper steps to ensure a smooth transition towards a T plus 1 settlement thing. Alright, I hope the concept is clear. Now, why SEBI has taken this decision? 
because it was receiving request from various stakeholders to shorten the settlement cycle to bahut request aa rahi thi ki settlement uh, time ko t plus 2 se kam karke t plus 1 kiya jaye and isse related phir stock exchanges clearing corporation depository sebi ke sath aapas mein discussions hoye based on the sebi's discussions with the stock exchanges clearing corporation depositories it is decided to provide some flexibility to stock exchanges by reducing the time period from 3 plus 2 to t plus 1 Now this very thing is going to benefit the domestic investors because it will increase the liquidity the trading turnover reduce the settlement risk broker defaults by reducing the overall settlement time but it is going to be a problem for your foreign portfolio investors that's why they are not preferring this decision they are uh, basically requesting sebi to uh, basically ta- take back this very decision kyunki agar aapki settlement t plus 1 matlab kam time mein karni hai ab what happens is when there are some foreign portfolio investors investing in your securities market then the time zones are different the time uh, in a uh, indian the time of the indian stock exchange market and the other differs okay because of which they might have to pay some amount in advance so they are not preferring this type of a uh, change all right but our but sebi has not said anything about whether it is going to change its decision or not so as of now from the next year onwards this settlement option will be available for the stock exchanges all right so if i move back to the question we have to identify the incorrect statement first is correct that t plus 1 settlement will come into effect from the jan 1st 2022 second is correct that at least one month notice is to be given when you need to shift to t plus 1 third says that after opting for t plus 1 stock exchanges can't shift back to t plus 2 no after at least working for the same cycle with the same cycle for 6 months they can again shift back so this statement is incorrect we had to identify the incorrect that's why answer is option d this was all for today's session i hope the session was useful for you with this i would like to end up the session thank you so much